came back from Europe and I went downtown and I went to a secondhand bookstore and I found a book on modern art by Salvador Dali, half in French and the other half, uh, and the other side of it was uh, in English. So I could read it in English, of course, because I didn't read French. I took the book and I walked along the streets. I went uptown and I went to Barbara's own Plaza, which is a very luxurious area in front of the Central Park. And I felt really special because I had this nice book and I went into this lovely tea. It's a tea place. It's a place where you have coffee, tea, whatever, lunch, full of beautiful lights and all that. And I walked into, and the book is a book written by Salvador Dali, if I haven't mentioned that already. And when I walked into the, sal to the salon of uh, Barbara's own class, I thought, well, I'll just walk through. I didn't intend to sit down by myself, just to walk around. That's what I like to do. It's like window shopping, right? Mm -hmm. And then I walked to the uh, tables, and I walked into a man who was walking towards me, because he was going to sit down, obviously, and it was Salvador Dali. And I thought, wow, uh, this is fantastic. I mean, I couldn't even think of anything, except I went right up to him, because we were walking towards each other. But I stopped in front of him and I said to him that I had a book that I just bought and uh, it was written by him. And he was surprised to see me, delighted, and uh, invited me to have a drink, and which I gladly accepted. And I told him how often I thought about him and that he always reminded me of my father because he had the same eyes. So he was very happy to hear that. We talked and he invited me to have a, another drink. We had the mint julep, which was his favorite drink. And uh, I started to get a little high because I'm very susceptible. And then he uh, told me that he reminded, I reminded him of D.H. Lawrence because of our eyes. So maybe, you know, it's the same kind of uh, light color eyes with uh, that pop out a little bit and you can see through on the side. So I was delighted because I loved D.H. Lawrence as a writer and blah, blah, blah. We talked about nothing in special or nothing I can really remember because after the third mint julep, <laughs> I was really gaga. I mean, I really couldn't say what it is that we were talking about. I've become very, very fluid, very easy. I mean, it, it was marvelous. And then somehow or other, he said, yeah, come with me and uh, I'd like to show you. There was hardly any memory I have of words, but all I know is he took me out of the, uh, out of the plaza and walked along the avenue of Fifth Avenue to the hotel called St. Regis. And uh, he had a, and I went up to his room, uh, and it was a, a lot corridor with a, a big room, and he talked to me about his painting, and somehow or other I found myself in a position where he had shown me a room which had curtains all in the room, all along the walls, like a velvet, dark curtains with beautiful fabric and a chair, a large chair, which it looked sumptuous chair, rather from an early, early period. And I found myself, because I'm, I'm an artist model and I often pose for artists and photographers and painters, okay? And I found myself naked in the chair, in a sloped, slat, sloped position, sitting back. And the name of the name of San Sebastian was in my mind because he talked about doing a painting of San Sebastian. And what I realized is I was going to be San Sebastian, a male martyr who would have, you know, with a female with breasts because I had breasts, but I had very large shoulders, so I figured that makes sense. I would be a good male, female model. And so I kind of 
sat there and I fell asleep. I was so exhausted from these mint juleps that it was marvelous. I was sleeping until I, then I heard a fluttering, a fluttering sound, something that made me awakened kind of, and it was kind of like a slapping, a flapping sound. That's a good word, like that. And then I felt a light, very light uh, drops of something on my body. And what occurred to me is that this man, Salvador, had masturbated. And when he ejaculated, it arrived on top of me. So I was really, when I became in my drunken stupor, conscious of this fact, I just, you know, got up and went to put my clothes on. And uh, he didn't say a word to me. And then, then I went out into the corridor room, part of the big room, and there was a corridor. And um, I was dressed, I had my jacket. And he wanted me to give him my address and my telephone number. So there I am in front of this situation, and the bell rings of his apartment, and he goes to the end, opens the door, and these young, I saw these beautiful young people at the door coming in to his apartment. <laughs> this lovely, really high-looking kids from, you know, the jet set, whatever they call them. And, uh, and I realized that that was it. I was going to leave this, the place, not write anything down, not give him anything. And he was a little bit surprised. He, he really didn't expect me to, to leave like that without leaving my, my address. I figured he would like to work on San Sebastian. Why not? So I left. That was it. I was out. Whew. I had the book, of course, and I, had, I mean, I was all together. It was okay. Well, he signed the book for you, mm -hmm. didn't he? he signed and, uh, yes, at the, at the restaurant, at the Barbizon Plaza, he, he signed the book of uh, uh, homage right away with a big H O M A G H J E in French, homage à Olga. And he put a little crown over the name O, over the letter O, like he does it with letters. Uh, and he signed 1961, 51, and it was 61, or even 62. So he was a whole 10, 11 years yeah. behind. His mind already, he later, was part of the past. Later on, I met Marcel Duchamp with my husband, which I had married, Mr. Billy Kluver, who, uh, who did a lot of work, a lot of work all the time. And he and uh, a friend of his, Pontus Houghton, went to visit Marcel Duchamp. So I went along. I wasn't married with Billy Kluver at this time, but I remember that I went to Duchamp's with them, and Duchamp talked to them about, obviously, what they all wanted to talk about. They were interested in art, and, uh, and, uh, and it was nice to see this man, Duchamp, very, very, very polite, gentle, quiet, sort of clean. And he did mention uh, Salvador Dali. And he did mention that Dali was a little bit too much extreme about what he's about in his life. And I could understand that. And of course, I didn't tell him the story, but <laughs> the experience that I had, because, uh, I mean, I wasn't going to show off part of Dali who would have loved to hear that story, perhaps, because it's true to the nature of Dali in a way, because he had quite a reputation. And that's all. Huh. But it's, um, yeah, but I mean, I, seeing the artists, very, very known artists like that, who have their opinion about other artists, that's, you know, I had this opinion about Dali because he did something that I didn't like, and somebody had this Think about him because he was doing something that he didn't like. So yeah. it's crazy. Whole thing becomes crazy. A lot of artists that, that I bumped into.